the Douglas Credit Union, thanks a million for giving up your time. Um, I suppose we'll start off by giving people an idea of what you've achieved so far. In a fairly young career, you've played for Cork City up 50 times. You represented Ireland under 17 and under 19 level. Um, your trials at the moment for the Irish University team. I'm hoping to go to the World University Games this year in Italy. How does it feel knowing that you're only 19, you've already achieved this? much in uh, your career so far yeah it's really it's a huge honor to be honest but you kind of have to take a step back and actually realize what you have achieved like it kind of comes natural to me at this stage but you really do just have to take a step back and look at what you achieved and i am really grateful and appreciate all the opportunities that i've gotten so far and how did it all begin um i started playing with the passage academy when i was about three or four and then just stuck a passage then until under 18s and after a couple of days after my 16th birthday then I signed with Cork City. It's been a great day in, in, in your household and that they happened. Yeah definitely I was training with Cork City for a couple of months beforehand but I wasn't able to sign until I was 16 because it's a senior team so then when I signed it was a big it was a huge achievement for me like you know it was my first senior team and it was in the National League so they're all very proud of me. And it's been a good couple of years at Cork City I suppose you won the cup two years ago yeah, two which years obviously is fantastic and was Wexford and Piedmont have kind of they're the two top teams in the league at the moment, but you're not too far away from the middle. No, league. no, definitely. The, I think winning the cup was definitely the my greatest memory for football, definitely. And we beat Piedmont and Wexford in the quarter final and the semi final for that cup, so it was a huge uh, achievement for us. But definitely this year we're pushing on for the league and hoping to get more results against the top teams. Like we only lost to Piedmont two one at the start of the season, and it was definitely could have went our way. We definitely showed up on the day, so. Yeah, we're just really pushing on now this year, hoping to get more results. How supportive have been Passage Soccer Club oh, been to you over the years? They've been incredible. Like as I said, I've been with them since I was about three or four, and especially Tina and Bird Murphy, they like they've just coached me all the way up, and they still are so supportive of me today. You know, still coming out to my matches and all. But you know, it, it really does push you on when you have such a support behind you, and you know that you're making them proud and. When I went to Ireland, the texts I get, like, you know, it's just, it is, it's really heartwarming, to be honest. It's, it's, I suppose you get that not just from the club, you're getting that from the oh, whole every, community yeah, of yeah, Passage. It's yeah. Passage turned green there when the girls got yeah. to the, the National Cup final, which I'm sure you would love to have been a part of. Yeah, yeah. So that's one thing you miss out, yeah. and you miss out on these things, but it's great to see them push on and push forward. Yeah. Some things, when a team loses a, a, a star player, they might struggle, but the girls, in fairness, have pushed on and... Got on with it and they were very lucky in that National Cup final. Yeah. It was a pity they didn't win it. I know, I know. Um, you're not the only girl, I suppose, locally who's gone on and done great things from a soccer point of view. Um, Claire Shine yeah. is banging in the goals over in Scotland at the moment, uh, which is great to see. She would play with you with Cork City as well. You've got Katie McCabe over at Arsenal, um, Emma Byrne, who was over at Arsenal for 16 years, Louise, Louise Quinn, who's over at Arsenal. So, the Irish outlook at the moment is very positive. Um, and do you think this is going to continue or do you, how would you see this continuing? Yeah, definitely. I think there's huge up and coming stars in the, in the senior squad, especially. You can see the senior squad is quite young, but it just does show that the amount of talent that is coming through. And even the likes of Leanne and um, Heather, who are playing over in England as well, and they're only 19. So it's definitely shown that the Irish are producing quality players. And even our league at home, like the standard is always getting better and better each year so definitely I think the girls are putting their um, their mark over on the farm football so they're definitely um, coming up. So the future of Irish football is looking good yeah, definitely. in the ladies game. Yeah. Um, you can see us in the same four years time in the World Cup, mm -hmm. qualifying for the World Cup. Yeah I think so because even if you look at the results against the Netherlands this year they, do, they drew away to them you know in front of thousands of, of the Netherlands supporters so you can see that the results are coming and even with the National League, with the 17s National League starting this year as well, it's just, it's just showing that there is the standard is getting better and better and the players are getting better as well. And what needs to be done, I suppose, to increase the standard and increase, I suppose, the attendance at games? Yeah. Um, well, definitely with the standard, I suppose, you know, training, and not, not a lot of clubs can afford to be having training every night of the week, but we really should be. Like, I know there's about two or three teams that are in our league who do train every night of the week but it's funding like it is it is expensive to have those trainings and you know have good facilities and all that but definitely funding is a huge thing and then with the support I think publicity is a huge thing but obviously with the 2020 campaign that's really kicking off and 
it has increased I think the support already and just if that keeps going and people start coming out and supporting our football like it will get bigger and better. And how important are campaigns like the 2020 campaign to women's sport? Yeah it's huge like you you never really hear of women's football and then when 2020 but even now you're just women's football women's sport in general but then when you have the likes of the 2020 campaign and you have young girls looking up to female like Irish female sports stars it is it's it's, it's getting better but you know with the likes of camps and stuff like that like soccer sisters and all that I think it's big it, you need a big push to get a lot of kids into that and then they start enjoying it and then just keep going, going there. Yeah because when I was growing up with very, there was very little in terms of fem Irish female sports stars or internationally even in female sports stars that you would have seen in the media or anything else you would like to sign or something was the major one. Yeah. Outside of that there was very very few you can think of where now things have really changed. Who would you who would you have looked up to? Um, my idol growing up was Claire Shine. Um, I used to just be so starstruck by her. Like she used to go off and score loads of goals for Ireland, and then she was one of our coaches for the Cork Under Fourteen team, and she was just so helpful. Like, anything you needed help, but she was always getting on to seeing what you needed. And I remember one day I told her I wanted to get faster and fitter, and she took me for sprints after training. And, you know, she stayed behind, and then she side with us then, and it was just like, Jesus, I'm playing with my idol here, like. I was so nervous, but like playing on the pitch with someone with that standard is just incredible. Like she's, she's just so good. And now fast forward a few years, and she's one of my best friends, and she's still inspiring me. Like banging in the goals, as you said for Glasgow. It's it's good to hear that. I suppose that your idol is cut from women's sport. It's not it's like Messi and Ronaldo and these fellas. It's someone from women's sport. And Claire's only what, four four or five years older than you, yeah. um, which is great. It is great to see. And in ten years' time, it would be great to see. The young girls coming up now saying, Oh, my idol growing up was Danielle Burke or Claire Shine yeah. or M. Or, I remember Burnham was retired on with Katie McCabe. Yeah. That would be great to see that in 10 years' time. And it'd be the norm, and no, no one would be surprised by it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure you'd love someone to be saying, Oh, Danielle Burke was <laughs> my idol growing up. Um, what needs to change, I suppose, in the game in terms of right? It must be very hard. You've got, I don't know, how many, how many girls in the, in the squad? Cork City? 23. 23 in the squad and everyone gets sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Would it be nice to go into a season when we're not worrying about getting sponsorship for players, just the funding is there? Yeah, definitely. Right. There's always a burden of money like over women's sport in general, you know, not getting paid and all that, but I think we just try to focus on playing, like, you know, we just love to play, so I think that's what we focus on. But of course, we would love to just go in and get, get our gear without having to pay for it, you know, have our expenses paid for and all that you know we do dedicate our a lot of time to it so you'd expect that in return but you know we're not going to be dwelling on it we're not going to be giving out stink about it or whatever we just we just get on with it but it is it is disheartening you know like seeing the women's senior team having to fight for just to get paid something as simple as that like they deserve it's, it, it's it exactly yeah, like yeah, it's just so yeah. simple like that but you know we can't really do anything about it like you know so we just get on, get on. Yeah. It, it is turning a corner though but it oh is, yeah definitely no, yeah it's probably not as fast as some people would like yeah but it is it is getting there and i think in the next couple of years i will see a big change i suppose you're a few years behind the ga the ga has been yeah. long established the women's national league is fairly new so but it will it probably will get there in four or five years yeah. time it'll probably be, be a massive massive difference and hopefully just the crowds and attendance will yeah hopefully. will get bigger and bigger how important was it to have as I said earlier, the, the passage community and your own family support over the years. Yeah, it's huge. Like football is, it is a tough sport. Like you know, it is mentally draining and stuff like that. And you do have knockbacks and stuff like that. But then when you have the support of like my family and of course passage, you know, it really does drive you on. Like with them being like having belief in you and all that, you know, it really does make you try harder. And when you get to like experience playing for Ireland and stuff like that, you just it's all worth it. Like. And your own mum played for Cork as well back yeah, in the day? Yeah, no, she was a little superstar apparently back in her day. She played for Passage and Cork City and my dad was a coach then as well. So I've always been kind of brought up with sport and my brothers are all claiming that they they made oh, yeah. me who I they was and all that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. But they're not playing for Cork City? No. <laughs> um, what, I suppose, what are your aspirations for the future? Um, I, I'd obviously love to keep going with Cork City and, you know, get more silverware with it. I think we're well able to... To get something this season and then of course i do want to move abroad and if that means signing with a team abroad i definitely would look into that like i think it's a huge opportunity that you'd be silly to turn down really but just as, as long as i'm enjoying football i don't mind where i am 
So we're going to have to Katie McCabe over there, so <laughs> Claire over in, in, in Glasgow. I'm sure they both look after you there and get you a contact over. Um, I suppose I suppose you'd love to represent Ireland oh, yeah, at senior definitely. level. Yeah. Um, because I can imagine, what, what did it even feel like representing an under-17, under-19 level? Oh, it's huge. Like, you know, when you put on the jersey and the singing the national anthem, it's just, it's indescribable to be honest. Like, you know, playing in front of your, your family and the girls like that you've trained so hard with and getting the results, like, it's just, it's pure passion really, like, you can't really describe it, but it's a huge honour for me, yeah, it's something that I'll keep forever. I suppose other girls, like, the girls coming up in passage can probably take inspiration from you saying, well, she worked so hard, and this is what she's after getting, yeah. she's wearing an Ireland jersey, yeah. that, that could be me, uh, which is fantastic to see. And I suppose we've, we'll kind of finish in this question, right, so, there's a massive fall off as soon as girls get 13, 14, they seem to stop playing yeah. sport. What advice would you, give, would you give to girls now who are playing sport now or who've dropped, even dropped out of sport at 16 or 17 and they're thinking about getting back, back into it? What advice would you give to No, I definitely would. I think sport is probably the best thing to ever happen to me. You know, you do go through times when you're like, why am I giving up so much of my time and effort? Like, you, have, you do have to sacrifice a lot. And especially being a teenager, you know, all your friends are going out and all that. And you're sitting at home after training being like why can't i be like that but the experiences like the memories and the friends you make through it is just i it's second to none like i wouldn't change it for the world but everyone does feel like that like even the top players like they all have those moments but once you stick at it you know the rewards will come and it definitely pays off and the social side it's massive oh yeah huge like I, i've made my best friends through football and you know not even just on my team but even from other teams like you go out and you play against your best friend one weekend and all that kind of stuff but no it's definitely it is a huge social side of it as well i don't think like obviously not many people see it but yeah we do we do have yeah, a lot you, you do get out of the pitch yeah, as yeah, well we like it's yeah. not just on the pitch yeah. you're giving out each other on the pitch you talk yeah, afterwards definitely. i suppose that's the great thing about sport and no matter what happens in the pitch, exactly. once you walk off it, you forget about it and you just get on with it. Um, Danielle, thanks a million for your time. Um, best of luck with Cork City for the rest of the season. Best of luck with your trials with Irish University. And I hope we see you in an Irish jersey in a senior game in the near future.